This is the story of Kevin Crehan, a 35-year-old that was sentenced to prison for one year after facing charges of committing a racist attack against a Bristol mosque. There is still confusion over how an act of racism can be committed against a building, and how the religion of Islam can be classified as a race given that all creeds are welcome to follow, and, not so welcome to unfollow, the belief system known as Islam. However, his story has been widely reported by the mainstream media. One such story printed by the Daily Mail, is generally representative of all the stories printed, and minus the repeated sentences, reads as follows. Man jailed for leaving a bacon sandwich outside a mosque is found dead in prison halfway through his 12-month sentence. Kevin Crehan, 35, was halfway through a one-year prison sentence he received in July after admitting the racially motivated attack on the Jamia Mosque in Bristol earlier this year. He was accompanied by Alison Bennett, 46, and Mark Bennett, 48, and Angelina Swales, 31, who also pleaded guilty over the incident. A St. George flag with the words, no mosques was also tied to the fence outside the building in Totterdown, Bristol, and shouted racial abuse at a worshipper. Bacon was tied to the door handles and sandwiches made of raw meat and sliced white bread were left at the entrance, in what was described in court by the judge as an, an attack on England. The prison service confirmed Crehan was found dead in his cell at HMP Bristol on Tuesday, December 27. As with all deaths in custody, the independent prisons and probation ombudsman will investigate. Crehan was jailed for a year while Bennett was given a nine-month sentence. Bennett was given a six-month sentence and Swales was given a four-month sentence, both suspended for two years. They were all banned from going within 330 feet of a mosque anywhere in England or Wales for the next 10 years. So, what's wrong with this story? Well, given that they were supposedly reporting his murder, it may surprise you to know that out of the 2,660-word-long article, less than 280 words actually referred to his brutal and sickeningly violent murder. Over 2,230 words were dedicated to reinforcing his crimes against Islam, but only 280 talked about his actual murder. That's just two sentences out of a two-page article. An article that was supposedly created to report his murder. For the eagle-eyed ones out there, the remaining 150-odd words were from the ombudsman claiming to leave no stone unturned in an effort to bring those responsible to justice, or words to that effect. Although, you shouldn't be too hard on the Daily Mail, because they were, as mentioned, representative of the majority of mainstream stories issued at the time. Instead, we should look at why the mainstream media overall, decided to frame the reports of the brutal murder, in a way that portrayed Crehan as the most despicable person to ever walk the earth, whilst casually glossing over the fact that he had just been brutally murdered whilst in a secure prison. Though it might only be subjecture, it doesn't take Einstein to make a link between Crehan's bacon sandwich stunt and anti-Islam stance, to his sudden and brutal death whilst at Her Majesty's pleasure. So, if his murder, as suspected by many, was in fact a racially motivated attack, and given he was serving his sentence for a racially motivated attack, should his murder not be reported in an equally aggressive way? If he was murdered because of his religious views because we all know that race and religion are the same thing, just like devil worship and driving a car, and was charged and sentenced for offending the religious views of others, then what makes his case different to theirs? I say, others because I'm not sure what gender the mosque was. Given that all government-related media stories are now only issued via official government media channels, any media group reporting government-related stories outside of official channels, regardless of how true they are, will face prosecution and bankruptcy adducing fines, as from January 2017, it could be argued that the media groups are illustrating notions put forward by our government, rather than their editors. Regardless of origins, the perspective is clear. Vilify all right-wing, not just far-right, but all right-wing, people, even when they are murdered. If they are attacked or murdered and it's racially motivated, but the attackers are not a Christian, Buddhist or Jewish, then vilify the victim and make no mention of the attackers or the possible motives. If this is true, then, as some are already arguing, we are living in an age where being Jewish, Buddhist or Christian, means you are subject to victimization, persecution and, as can be seen above, have less rights than others. Ask yourself this. How can this be seen as acceptable in a so-called civilized Western society? The Cassandra Files. Video number one.
If you have enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to our channel, where more videos will be regularly uploaded. Viewers are welcome to use any or all parts of this video and related text and audio, provided that 1. its original context and meaning are maintained and 2. the video and related material are clearly cited to the Cassandra files at this web address. The Cassandra Files 2018